Hey everybody, it's your boy Steve here. Uh, in today's video, I'm going to do a demonstration and talk to you about water resistant inks as opposed to waterproof inks. Why you might want to use one over the other. One isn't better than the other, they're just different. They have different applications. And so we'll talk about that. Uh, I'll talk with you about which ones I use, why I use them, and of course, how I use them. So stick around. When you're doing line work like this, just simple line work, you can use either waterproof or water resistant ink. I suppose you could even use non waterproof ink, which means that if you drop some water on it, <laughs> your, your drawing's going to be ruined unless you follow through and, and use that on everything. But uh, for me, I like to protect my drawings, and so on just the line work, I will use uh, waterproof ink. Now, on something like this, I used uh, waterproof ink, and then I went over the top of it. Um, this is a kind of watercolor board, and I went over the top with a with a tone of uh, oh, I believe it was sodalite, uh, sodalite, uh, and uh, and then you know did my my looser look to it, and which is great. I mean, then you can go over the top with the white and everything. The problem with this is that it doesn't have the same look as, let's say, a water-resistant ink that's had water put on it. So. Now this one here, this was uh, this is a water-resistant ink. This was done with a fountain pen ink called Diamine Graphite. And you'll notice that, you know, I did the very little ink work on here, but then I went in with some water and touched the edges up and in places it completely obliterated the look uh, of the line work and then I went back in and added some line over the top. Now this has a second color to it, this this wine color here uh, and uh, you know it's got a real nice loose look to it if that's uh, if that's your thing, if that's what you're going for. Now on something like this, this I did with the Waterman uh, Serenity Blue ink. This which is this ink here. This is also a fountain pen ink. It's very inexpensive. I would probably say that this ink is more of a water, uh, non-waterproof ink, which just means that if you get it wet, the line work is gone. And so you'll see here, um, I'll show you a little bit of me uh, working on this, but uh, once I get the line work done, then I'll go ahead and, and I'll add some water, drip some water over the top using a, a water brush. And uh, you'll see that places like this uh, looks very nice because the, the line work is, is gone. And even down here, you'll see that the line work is, is, is gone. And with all these drips and, and things, I really like this look. It goes very fast. Uh, so, uh, yeah, that was the uh, pretty much a non-waterproof ink or non-water resistant ink. So let me go ahead and show you uh, how I go about um, finding my my water resistant inks, the ones that I like and how I how I work them just with a real fast demo. Here's a quick overview of some of the tools or of the tools I'll be using today. Uh, we'll start out with the ink. This is Noodler's Heart of Darkness. These are uh, really good colors that you will see here pretty soon. Uh, so that's my black, and for my blue, I use Noodler's Blue Black. And that's the one I'll be using today. This is my Twisby Go pen, fountain pen. Uh, very inexpensive. When I first saw it, I thought, I am never buying that pen. It's so ugly. But then I saw somebody do some color uh, testing demos with it, and uh, it's really, it's really a nice pen, one of my favorites. And even though it's so ugly. Next, uh, I'll show you this marker that I use. This is a Master's Touch, which means it's from Hobby Lobby. It's a very light, it's the lightest one they have. It's a 0 0.5, which is uh, pretty light. Uh, it's hard to, to see, which is exactly what I want. And then this is a water brush. If you're familiar with them, you know, but if not, that's where the water goes on the bottom comes out there and that's all the water you need to take with you 
it's uh, very nice to keep a little towel to clean it off in between brushes. But for this particular drawing, since it's uh, bigger, I'm going to go ahead and use some water with one of my travel brushes. And so here we go. For our little demo, I'm going <laughs> to going to demo what I seem to always demo and that's doing my little that little standard ball that everybody does uh, I find that uh, it's just my go-to thing it has been ever since I went to school so uh, I'm just going to go ahead and do a little bit of hatching here to get a little bit of volume nothing fancy I did speed it up just a little bit So once I get everything in there, now it's time to go ahead and, and get my water brush. It's all full and to start to, by adding water. Now, since I did so much cross hatching here, there's going to be a lot of ink that's available. So the more line you put down when you add, and this is just clean water. There's no blue in this. This is just picking up the ink uh, that's not uh, waterproof. So I keep a little paper towel in my hand and, uh, go to town on it super simple I, I love this technique and the water fastness of the ink itself uh, depends on how much ink actually gets picked up and moved around it looks like you spent a lot more time on it than you than you actually did and that's it I mean there's nothing more to it than that so let's take a look at some of the colors that I tested some of the inks this here is uh, Noodler's Rome Burning it's a really nice color. It's kind of a brown color, but it yellows up. Aristocracy, that's Noodler's. Diamine Graphite. Pasternak is also Noodler's ink. Noodler's Black. And Heart of Darkness, Noodler's. Uh, and these two are probably the ones that I would use most of all, leaning towards Heart of Darkness. Now, Diamine Graphite, it, it's a little less water resistant. And this here is Noodler's Blue Black. And it, it's the uh, it's my favorite color to to work with some of the line work when you get done with the water over the top some of it is blue some of it uh, remains black and so uh, this is the color that I'm going to go ahead and do our little sketch doing uh, it's always a good idea when you get uh, an ink to uh, to test it and see what it's going to do I get a general idea by going to Goulet pens or Jet pens uh, under fountain pen ink, and they have all tested all of their inks that they sell for water fastness. And you can find out just how much or how little your ink will move when you add water to it. And that's the best way. And here we go with the demo. Uh, this is my jackrabbit. I've done a little uh, drawing using that uh, very, very light marker so that I've got something to follow. And uh, there's my uh, Twisby Go pen. And uh, I'm not going to put a lot of ink down for this. Uh, just enough to kind of get some color once I add water over the top of it. Let's speed it up since it's not really a drawing tutorial. This is uh, going to get us to uh, the reason for doing this video, which is adding the water. Now, if I were just going to be doing this as a line drawing, I would be adding more hatching. But knowing that I'm going to go ahead and add water over the top of this and let that tone kind of be the star, let's, uh, let's just keep control over how much uh, line work I put down. It should be just enough in order to be able to move that ink around and uh, get some color and some tone down. I don't know why that whenever I draw these jackrabbits, I want to make their feet bigger than they really are. <laughs> I think there was a design flaw. They should have bigger feet. Yeah. I live in Arizona, in central Arizona here, and uh, we do have jackrabbits around, so I get to see them, although not as much as I would like. It seems like uh, we have one or two move in, and they're here. They set up house. They're here for a couple weeks, and then the, the coyotes come along. <laughs> 
Jesus. All of a sudden, there's there's no more jackrabbits, but you know, it's like the old Doritos commercial. You know, eat all you want, uh, they'll make more. I've talked about this a little bit before, but when I either work in pencil or ink like this, when you're doing your line work, um, you generally draw in the direction that the fur grows or um, in, in the direction that, let's say, the rain would hit it and then fall off of it. That's a, that's a pretty good way in order to be able to imitate what the volume would, would look like. Um, my camera's a little skewed here, and so the jackrabbit, he, he looks a little skewed as I'm watching this. But uh, anyways, yeah, just try and draw, especially if you're doing animals, draw in the direction that the fur is growing. And uh, depending on how long or how short the hair is, is how long or how short your, your strokes should be. Okay, I've got my water here, I've got my brush, so let's go ahead and dive right into this. I start out, uh, you know, just adding a little bit of water and uh, kind of work my way up to it. The, um, there's not a whole lot of ink down here, so uh, I can control the amount of uh, color that I get to move around. And then I'll go back in afterwards and I will add more line work to it, make it more of a line drawing with tone rather than a tone drawing with a little bit of line. I also like to bleed my, uh, my tone out a little bit. I don't follow the, the lines exactly. Uh, if, you, if you follow the lines exactly, it's, it's kind of like there's no pizzazz, there, there's no snap to it. It's like coloring within the lines. Don't be afraid to go out and experiment and to see how, how comfortable you are with, with having your, uh, your lines bleed out. The, uh, you know, for me, the worst thing that I can do is just have something that's just plain boring and uh, too controlled. Uh, I, I get a lot of that with my with my oil painting. It has to be very controlled, but you know, with with my ink drawings here, I like to experiment with them and have some fun and have them have them be a little bit more not exactly sloppy, but I like to have some texture to it using the water and the drips and the drops and. It's just so much more expressive and, and, and exciting to me. And, you know, don't be afraid to, to try some different things. If it doesn't work, you only have a, a few minutes invested and you've learned something. So yeah, get, get in there and, uh, and give yourself permission to, uh, to be a kid and have fun. As I go, I think that you can see that, uh, that the line work that's down there, it gets softened which is a wonderful look, and it's not something that you get from using waterproof ink. You know, this, um, depending on the ink that you use, like I've shown you before, is uh, how much ink is going to move. So one of the other things uh, that I'll do is pick up the bottle like I have here, and I will uh, dip it in the bottle, then dip it in the water, and uh, Go ahead and, and get a little bit sloppy with it. Put it down uh, full strength if you want to, and then you can pick it up, move it around. You really, it's very hard to make a mistake that you can't recover from with this. And that's something that I really wanna stress with you is that uh, just, uh, try something and if it doesn't work you can sop it up with your uh, with your paper towel that was one of the things that I should have showed you uh, but I'll mention here is always keep a roll of paper towels with you and uh, you can if you can't completely get rid of the drip or the, the amount of ink that you put down you can at the very least soften it up quite a bit and it'll still look like uh, that's what you meant for it to look like all right, I'm going to say it. Uh, you can have some happy accidents. <laughs> uh, sorry. Sorry, Bob. Uh, Bob Ross. Uh, God rest his soul. You know, I, I just, I got to say how surprised I am that he's such a pop culture icon. I mean, <laughs> you know you're a pop culture icon when you've got a Chia Pet head. Uh, and you've got a Funko Pop 
a bunch of different Funko Pops of him. Uh, I, I don't get it myself, but uh, I'm glad that he's turned so many people onto art. <laughs> so when I was growing up, we didn't, I don't think we had Bob Ross. We had William Alexander. I mean, he was the guy that I remember. And Helen Van Wyck. Those were the two PBS uh, personalities who were painting. I used to love to go home and watch Helen Van Wyck uh, make, her, uh, make her painting or threaten to make soup. So at this point, we're done. We don't have to do anything else. You know, it's a nice line drawing with a little bit of tone, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna work it to death like I always do and uh, work some line work over the top of it you'll notice that when you go over the top of something that you've moved around with water, with uh, water resistant ink, not waterproof ink, that the new ink that goes down is going to be darker. Uh, the other will be a little more of a ghost image and you can use that to your advantage if you like. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and keep working this and then I'll show you what it looks like uh, when I get done. But I hope you found this uh, useful. I hope that you learned a little bit. Give it a try. If you haven't tried it already, uh, you're, you're gonna love it. It doesn't have to be fountain pen ink. Uh, there are a lot of uh, pens out there, just regular writing pens that, that have ink that's not waterproof. Uh, so do your homework, find one that you think is gonna work for you and uh, go to town on it. Of course, I'll leave links to Jet Pens and Goulet Pens uh, in the video description. I don't make any money on that. I just use them. I think they're terrific. And uh, if you're looking for a place to buy and to do your research, that's a good place. To, those are two good places to go. And if you have used this, uh, or if you do use this technique, let me hear from you down in the comments. Uh, I'd love to hear you know, which inks you like to use, uh, how you work differently than I do, and uh, I'm always looking to learn. So please share your knowledge uh, with the rest of us. Well, I think I've done enough damage on this drawing for one day. So I'm gonna go ahead and close up the studio. Uh, if you like the drawing and, and you got some value out of it, please just go ahead and, and hit the like button. If you find that uh, this is content that you'd like uh, more of, go ahead and subscribe and, and hit the notification bell. Thanks for joining me and uh, until the next one, I'll see you down the road.